Hey guys, how's it going? It's Don Reagan and welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna be recording from my car today because I couldn't work from my office, but I want to focus on the training today and basically walk you through how we can use rigid bodies for objects to interact with the physics engine. We're gonna be changing some of the rigid body settings so that we can see how they interact, how one object can interact with another object. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing in this episode. In the previous ones, I show you that we created basically box colliders. I also created a sphere collider and a capsule collider and so on. So we went to colliders and colliders are great, but if we don't have physics, they really are not that helpful. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on this episode is basically explaining to you how physics work, how we can make this ball basically act like it would do in real life. If I move it up, I want this ball to fall down and not only fall down, but I want to actually add a property of bounciness so that it bounces like a real ball. I could also gonna introduce what's called physic materials to let the engine know how we want this ball to interact with the floor. If for, for example, this ball is a metal ball that is very heavy, the bouncing is not, it's not gonna be as strong as it would be if it wasn't a metal ball, it was just like a basic rubber ball. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's, let's go into the component area and I'm gonna show you how we can assign different properties so that we can make these game objects react to physics. But before we do that, I'm gonna create a new game object and that game object is gonna be a cube. The reason why I wanna create a new game object is because I want these objects to bounce and basically collide with the floor so otherwise they're gonna be falling in free fall and something about something like that will work the other thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move these around so they're not too close to each other and right about right about there and we can move these back and then this one forward then i'm gonna select my camera go back to perspective uh, there we go and I'm gonna select my camera and I'm gonna basically align with view. I show you how you could do that by going to game object, align with view, or basically doing that shortcut. All right, so that that works and that's perfect. And they, let's actually rename this, this one ground. You can also rename it floor. And I'm gonna resize it just a tiny bit more. There we go. And, and you can see that by default, this is adding a box collider, which is what we need and that works perfectly so the next thing that i'm going to do is we're going to focus on the sphere so let me just move the sphere up a tiny bit there we go so that's the first one then we're going to have our cube then we're going to have our capsule and i'm going to move the cylinder capsule plane it's going to go down so i'm going to have them in order this will be one two three four five and six so that we know which one we're which ones we're working with and I'm going to resize the scene view just a tiny bit more. Okay, perfect. So now we can start looking at physics. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this project. Let's actually move it right on this area. Okay, now that we have the project in this area, let's resize the hierarchy. And I'm gonna move it right about there so that I can focus on the scene view. That's really why I wanted to do that. Perfect, so the next thing that I'll do is if we select the uh, sphere, we can see that the sphere has a sphere collider. Let's click on a component and I'm gonna remove the word rotate and we can go down to, so you have a category called physics. So if we go into physics, you can see that everything about physics is in this area. Today, we're just gonna focus on rigid bodies and of course we already have colliders so we don't have to worry about those for now. But then in other videos, I'll cover cloth, or I'll, I'll cover some of these other joints and how we can actually use them. So for now, let's add a rigid body to the sphere. Excellent. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the sphere up a tiny bit. And just to cover some of these settings, the a rigid body is any component that is gonna be affected by physics. So if you if you want this to have you know, physics interaction, you have to have a rigid body. And there are some properties you can, you can change the mass. So this is the mass of these objects, the drag. You can also change the angular drag. You can change whether this object is gonna be affected by gravity or not. You can make it what is called kinematic. 
if I make a kinematic, this object is not going to move, it's not going to fall. I can also change the interpolation value, and that you can do interpolate or extrapolate. And if you hover over that, it should give you, it should give us kind of, you know, tool tips for each one of these settings if you need to know what they are. Also, collision detection, if you want this collision detection to be discrete. And this is all about, you know, how frequently this is going to be evaluated by the physics engine. If you want something that is continuous, continuous dynamic, continuous speculative, you can look at some of those in the documentation to see what which one of those is going to work. For now, I'm just going to leave the defaults. I think that's going to work for what we're doing right now. And you can also add constraints. So if I want, for, for instance, I want this object to freeze the position of X, so I want to freeze the position of Y, and then I could actually have, you know, if I want Y to be, you know, basically freeze, I don't want this object to move down, I could do that, but it will still be able to move on X and, and Z. The same thing with the rotation. If I wanted to freeze the rotation on X, Y, or Z, I could do that as well. So I'm going to uncheck it. Perfect. So now what happens if we hit play? Let's click on play. Now that we have a rigid body. So you can see that the object is falling down and but that doesn't really look like a you know like a ball a bouncing ball it just fall and then it basically stopped what happened if we so what happened if we change it to is kinematic and we hit play so you can see that it's kinematic it's making it so that it doesn't move so as soon as i release it i can actually toggle it and you can see that it out it didn't hit the floor because i re-enabled kinematic so let's do that one more time, but the, in this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze the Y position and I'm going to hit play. And you can see that now its kinematic is disabled, but I freeze the position on Y. I can do that as well. I can do that as well. And, and now it falls down. So how can we make it look more like a real ball? So what I'm going to do is for each one of these objects, I'm going to offset them a tiny bit. And we're gonna do exactly what we did with the other one. So you can also do multiple object selection, just like I did, and assign a rigid body to each one of those. So I, in this time, I'm just gonna search for rigid, and then assign a rigid body to each one of them. Excellent. So now when we hit play, we should see that all of them are gonna fall down. And if we look at the, oh, and I have an issue with, let's see, the mesh collide. Oh, okay, I see. On the mesh collider one, which I think is the, we go into, that's a capsule, capsule, I think it's the, okay, yeah, the plane. So instead of using a mesh collider on this one, you could change it to convex and then leave the mesh collider. But because we're worried about performance, I'm going to remove the mesh collider and I'm just going to do a box collider on that one. And then I'll ju just move this object up. And I think everything looks good. Now let's hit, let hit play. You can see that everything, everything is free falling. Let's look at this one right now and uncheck the Y. You can see that everything is falling down. Perfect. So what would happen if I change the drag on this one? So you can see the linear drag coefficient zero means no, no damping zero to infinity so if i change this to say say like give it a two value and you can see that the drag is making it so that it's pull is getting pulled away from from falling down and if we change this value to say five you can see that it's a slow slowly falling down so let's change that back to zero what I'm going to do, actually let's change it to 5 and then all these other ones will change it to different values so this one is going to be 3 cylinder, <clears throat> it's going to be let's see, let's make it make it a 2 the capsule is going to be a 1 and the quad in the plane we can make it maybe those ones are, big, are larger numbers they're going to be a 10 let's go back to the sphere and I think everything looks great now let's hit play one more time. You can see that these ones are falling much lower because the drag value is a lot larger. So if we hit, if we stop the game, 
So now the next thing that I want to show you is what happens if I change the material, the physics material on this object. So to do that, we're going to create a new folder under assets. I'm going to do assets and then create and then folder and we're going to call it physics materials. The physics material, we're going to right click on it and then I'm going to do create. And I believe is yeah, right here, physics material. And then this one, I'm just going to call it bounds because I want to assign that to the ball so that it falls more like a real ball. And in here, I'm going to change the drag. I'm going to change it back to zero. On the material, on the material, on the actual collider, we're going to be assigning the bounce material. And I'm going to hit play. And we shouldn't see any difference because I didn't make any changes to that material. So if I select that material, and you can see that I have different options in here. I could change the friction. I could change the static friction. I could change the bounciness and also some other settings that I honestly haven't used. So if I select this guy and let's go in here, let's change the bounciness to be one and see what happens. You can see that now it's bouncing more like a real ball. Let's say that this might be, this is a metal ball. Well, actually that's the larger value that I can assign. So it's from zero to one, so, so that's perfect. So that I didn't want to have any friction. And hit play. You can see that that's now falling perfectly. So the next thing that we can do is we can specify, you know, a few changes on these on these settings. So what I'm going to do is not only I want to bounce this one, but I'm going to clone this one. So I'm going to clone it and I'm going to put it on the side. I'm going to clone it one more time, put it on the side and then clone it a couple of times. And something like that. And then let's move this one maybe around that area and this one we can move it up and let's actually make this bigger too the floor otherwise they're gonna fall and we won't see what's happening okay perfect so then let's move these spheres to be right after them and this one's gonna be one this one's gonna be two and then three and four Okay, so they all have a physics material associated with them, so they should all bounce. So now let's hit play and see what happens. You can see that now things are colliding, and we lost a ball, and we lost another ball. Perfect, but you can see the simulation on the physics. So if we go in and hit play one more time, we can see how everything is just falling because we have physics material materials associated with them. Cool. So you know how some of them are falling and let me let me show you let's focus on this one just for a minute and if they if we hit play we'll see how they fall and they kind of so i want to so some of them are colliding as well so let's go and let's just zoom in a tiny bit more and i think yeah these two are colliding so i want this one to be very very heavy so how can we do that and we can do that by changing the mass so this one is right now set to a one i'm just going to change it to a 10 and then i'm going to hit play on the simulation and let's just give it a minute here for it to compile and because we're incrementing that value that mass on that object should yeah basically the other one bounce off right away because this is very heavy so if we hit play one more time how about we make this one very heavy as well so twice as heavy as that other one let's see what happens with the simulation you can kind of see that the bounce didn't happen the other one was the one that went off and then this one is staying in place and that's because the mass of these objects it's much bigger than the mass of these other objects so what if we make this one let's make this one now 100 and see what happened with the simulation And you can kind of see that now this one is stronger and the other one just went off. So that's some of the physics settings and how you can tweak them. And how about we go into this one as well. And you know how, so let's go in and 
move it up and then rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it right about let's do 45 degrees. And right about there. And you know, if this falls, the you would expect the rotation to, you know, to get applied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze the freeze the rotation on Y. Actually on X because that's the rotation that I want to freeze. So now let's hit play and see what happens. And if we fall, you can see that we're freezing the rotation. So normally, you know, in real physics, if we didn't, if you we weren't freezing the rotation, this would actually fall down. So if I hit X, you can see that I think I need to play it one more time in order for it to, to fall. Oh, there we go. Let's do it one more time. But this time, let's uncheck X and let's see what happened with the simulation. So I'm going to hit play. And looks like we're still getting, that's interesting. Oh, I think I know what's happening. So let's go into, that is really interesting because it normally that shouldn't happen. Because if I just move this a little bit, I'm pretty sure, interesting. Looks like the physics are having problems with the, hmm, interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change, let's change it back to say 40. See what happens if we do 40. Because I don't have anything, I'm not freezing anything. In fact, I'm just going to click it and toggle it just to make sure that, that it's going to work. And if we look at the collider, the collider is set up correctly. And perfect. Let's just see, play and see what happens. There we go. So that, that works. For some reason, when it fell on the ground, it was staying in place, which is really strange because the angle was bigger than 40 to start with and I would expect you know that to to basically make make it in and fall flat on the floor all right so that's basically that's basically what rigid bodies are for and what colliders are for so for now I think I'm just gonna call it good I show you how you can assign rigid bodies to different objects and change some of the rigid body properties in the game engine to see how they interact with each other so what I'm going to do on the next video is actually start working on some scripts and these scripts are going to allow us to detect collisions. So I want to be able to detect what's called a collision that is caused by a trigger collision or we can do a collision that is caused by a non-trigger collision. So I think that's I'm going to wrap it up right now. If you have any questions, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Thank you.